This is Storytelling with Puppets, and this time the story is called The Fat Cat. It's an old Danish folktale. And there's different versions out there. I've adapted this puppet version, uh, mostly from the one by Jack Kent, the book, old book by Jack Kent. Um, to tell this story, you actually don't need a cat. I play the cat in this story, um, and the puppets are the people that the fat cat meets. So um, usually I'll put on a couple of little kitty ears, but I don't have those with me right now, so um, I'm just going to pretend to be the cat. And then you need um, a old woman, you need a pot, and after that you can pretty much use anything you want. I've chosen some different puppets to tell it this way. But here, here's how the story goes, and you'll get the idea of, of how it works. Um, so, once upon a time, there was a little cat, that's me, and the little cat lived with um, an old woman. And one day, the old woman was cooking some gruel in a pot. And she said to the cat, I, I have to go visit uh, the, the neighbors. I I'll be back in just a moment. So off she went. Oh, but, but while I'm gone, don't eat that gruel, she told the cat. But as soon as she was gone, the cat did eat that gruel. He ate it all. Glug, glug, glug. And after he ate the gruel, he ate the pot, too. Glug. Um, so that's pretty much what's going to happen in this story. Um, you, you, you wear a big, a big shirt with buttons on it that's a little bit oversized. Make sure you tuck it in, and then you swallow things, and they go down into the shirt. It's very simple. If, it pop, if the buttons pop un, undone a little bit, you just put them back in. No problem. Well, soon the old woman came back, and she said, uh, My little cat, you look a little fat. What have you been eating? Well, said the cat, I ate the gruel, and I ate the pot, too. And now I am going to also eat you. And he grabbed the old woman and go lump. He ate her up. But he was still hungry. So he decided to see who else he might meet. So a couple things about that. You'll see this pattern. It is a repetitive story. Happened over and over again. Um, so the person comes up or animal comes up to cat and says the same thing. Um, you, you are very, very fat, and you sort of look at, look at the stomach, which gets fatter. What have you been eating? And then the cat lists what he's eaten so far, and then says, I'm going to also eat you. And so the cat, you as the cat, sort of moves closer to the, the puppet, and the puppet will throw out her arms or whatever, and then you sort of freeze that moment and grab it right off your hand and just go lump, and down she goes. So it's pretty fun. If you, if you do the words in the same... Um, same pattern each time, the kids will start to join in. Well, that cat walked along, and soon, soon, he met a fellow named um, Skolinkinlot. And Skolinkinlot said, My, my, little cat, you are very, very fat. What have you been eating? Well, said the cat, I ate the gruel and the pot, and the old woman too, and now I am going to also eat you! And he grabs Skolinkinlot and go lump. He swallowed him. But he was still hungry. And again, the kids will join in on that still hungry pretty easily, pretty naturally. So he walked along again, and this time he met a fellow whose name was Skohantot. Oh, little cat, said Skohantot, uh, uh, you are very, very fat. Uh, tell me, what have you been eating? Well, said the cat, I ate the gruel and the pot, and the old woman too, and Skull Lincoln Lot, and now I am going to also eat, and by this point they're going to say, you, oh, the kids will join in with, you, and he grabs Skull Hot and Dot, and go lump. He ate him up. So you see that the shirt is kind of coming unbuttoned right there, which is fine. That gets the puppets in easily, and then I just button it up for the next one. So... Very, very simple to do, and it doesn't have to be smooth or, or clever or anything like that. The kids will definitely get the idea. Um, one thing when I tell this story, I do like to have School Hot and Todd and School Lincoln Hot, because those names are so much fun to say. Um, but after that, um, in the book version that I know, the cat eats three birds in a flock and um, a few other things. But you don't really have to follow all that. Just use any, any puppets or props that you happen to have along. The other thing is when the people... Um, or animals meet the cat, they should have a sort of a distinct voice. They don't have to be um, remarkably original or anything like that, but they shouldn't all sound the same. Um, so, the cat was still hungry. 
So he walked along a little farther, and he met a big fluffy sheep. And the sheep said, oh, My little cat, you are very, very fat. Tell me, what have you been eating? Well, said the cat, I ate the gruel and the pot and the old woman too, and Skolinkalot and Skohantot. And now I am going to also eat you. And he ate that sheep. Gulp. But you know, the cat was still hungry. And you can go on for several more if you want to. I usually just have one more and then end it up after that. So the cat walked a little bit further, and then he met, um, he met two hopping rabbits. And the rabbit said, Hello, little cat. You are very, very fat. What have you been eating? Well, said the cat, I ate the gruel and the pot and the old woman too, and Skull Lincoln Lot, and Skull Hot and Tot, and a big fluffy sheep. And now I am going to also eat you. And he grabbed those rabbits and glump, glump. He ate them both. Well, by now that cat was very, very fat. But he decided he would see who else he might meet. So he walked along, and then he met a little girl with a pair of scissors. Goodness, little cat, she said, you are very, very fat. And you notice when I tell the story, I just like the she says and the the cat said and the cat did this. I like to interject those a little bit as a narrator. You can do it without that. That's just how I sort of learned and, and developed the story for myself. But you don't really need to be the narrator so much um, in those situations. Um, uh, uh, my goodness, little cat, she said, you are very, very fat. What have you been eating? Well, said the cat, I ate the gruel, and the pot, and the old woman too, and Skull Lincolnot, and Skull Hottentot, and a big fluffy sheep, and two hopping rabbits. And now I am going to also eat you! Oh no, little cat, that is where you are wrong. And then the little girl took her scissors, and she snipped, and she snipped, and she cut open... Oops. Scissors may drop, it's fine not to drop them on the kids. And she cut open that cat's stomach. And as she's cutting, you're sort of um, slicing with the scissors, uh, trying not to chop off your puppet's nose. Um, <laughs> slicing with the scissors, and then, um, and then you're at the same time with your other hand unbuttoning your shirt. And when she was done, out came, and hopefully they come out in order, but it doesn't really matter, out came the two hopping rabbits, and they hopped away. And the big fluffy cheat sheep, who trotted away. Out came Skull Hot and Tot. And you don't have to put these guys on your, on your hands again, just show them and get, get rid of them. Out came Skull Hot and Tot, and Skull Lincoln Lot. And out came that old woman, and her I do put on my hand. Out came the old woman, and she took her pot and went back home to make some more gruel. As for the cat, well, his stomach was all cut open. Don't worry, little cat, said the girl. Besides my scissors, I also brought my needle and thread. So she took her needle and thread, and she sewed the cat back together. And I, I don't really, with the girl on my hand, it's too hard to button the shirt, so I just sort of put it together like this, and that gives the idea. And she sewed the cat's stomach back together. And that is the end of The Fat Cat. And there's one way you can tell that story with puppets. <laughs>